Today's video sponsor is GVG More, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. In today's video, I'm going to show you one thing that I'm pretty, pretty sure that most of you don't know about AMD. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Hello, guys. I should Gameplays. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. If you're into gaming processors, you know that the recent Intel processors like the 12th and 13th generation brought a new kind of layout that more or less follows the big little layout we see on smartphones, featuring performance cores, which are the ones aimed at heavier tasks, and efficiency cores, which are lower powered cores that focus on background tasks in order to save power or to help the performance cores in multi-threading scenarios. And unlike what you may think, AMD also has the so-called efficiency cores, in this case called Zen 4C. And the thing is that AMD's efficiency cores are much better than the Intel's efficiency ones. And this is not fanboyism or bias in any sort, it's just that I believe that this time AMD really found what they were looking for. One of the biggest downsides of Intel's efficiency cores is that they do not use the same architecture as the performance ones, as they're based on Intel's Grace Mount that is usually used on mobile Pentium Gold and Celeron processors. Meaning that compared to the performance cores on that same processor, they not only have lower frequencies but also lower IPC, meaning that at the same frequency the performance cores would still be much faster. And they even lack some newer instruction sets, once again, due to having a different architecture. Zen 4C on the other hand features exactly the same architecture as Zen 4, with the same latencies, same IPC, same number of schedulers, basically everything is the same as the cores presented on the Ryzen 7000 series, apart from having half the L3 cache and reduced frequencies. If you were to use Zen 4C for gaming, well, you could, and it would still be much faster than the efficiency cores from Intel, but even with the same basic core as Zen 4, the reduced frequencies to around 3 GHz in this scenario and having half the L3 cache would make them much slower than the normal and bigger cores as well. Gaming highly benefits from those, as seen for example with the X3D CPUs from AMD like the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. But this wouldn't actually be an issue, as if these cores were to be used in the mainstream market or in the mainstream gaming CPUs such as the Ryzen series, they would be integrated with more or less the same layout as the Intel CPUs, with the normal big cores being used for gaming and the smaller ones for multi-threading. Or maybe in some scenarios with a proper CPU scheduler, they could be used to aid in gaming scenarios as well. But well, let's not hate on Intel's efficiency cores because Intel actually risk their butt when trying to innovate, which is a very good thing actually. And their efficiency cores are in fact quite smaller than the Zen 4C ones, occupying only one fourth the space of a performance core. Although I think that the performance core would still be able to do the job better, at least in terms of gaming of course. But what really gives a massive win to AMD Zen 4C here is the ability to use two times more cores per CCD compared to the normal Zen 4, meaning that a Ryzen 9 that features two CCDs could feature for example one CCD with 8 cores 16 threads of Zen 4 and another CCD with 16 cores 32 threads of Zen 4C, leading to a huge improvement in terms of multi-threading performance versus the current let's say 16 cores 32 thread solutions from AMD. And it is actually funny because as I was writing this video, some leaks about some alleged Ryzen 8000 APUs, called Strix Point, featuring 12 cores with a hybrid design of 4 Zen 5 performance cores and 8 Zen 5C cores, leading to a total of 12 cores and 24 threads, came out, which is insane for an APU. Not even mentioning the 16 RDNA 3.5 computer units, which is the most we've ever had on an APU. Certainly, amazing things are coming in the APU market, which is, in my opinion, very, very good to see. And well, I don't really know if you noticed, but one of the biggest advantages of Zen 4C over the Intel Grace Mount, so the Intel Efficiency Cores, is the ability to use SMT, Simultaneous Multi-Threading. 
So even though AMD's cores are still bigger than the Intel ones, they can do more work due to SMT, something that the smaller and most likely more power efficient cores from Intel can't. And just to add some more technicalities, if you're asking yourself how can AMD put two Zen 4C cores in the place of one Zen 4 core while using the same process node and the same arc, well, it is actually simpler than it looks. Having half the cache itself already allows for some saved space, but a reduction from roughly 5.5 GHz to around 3 GHz is the major point here. Because it seems that with lower frequencies you can make the internal structures much smaller because you don't have to worry about interferences or power leakages that come with higher frequencies. And this whole topic is very interesting to me and that's exactly why I wanted to make this video and share this information. And yeah guys, basically that's it, AMD does have efficiency cores as well and they will most likely start, uh, start showing up uh, in some, let's say, Ryzen 8000 series or 9000 series with the APUs and processors from the Zen 5 generation um, because uh, they do have to compete with Intel in terms of multi-threading at least and Intel is much better in multi-threading with their efficiency cores. So AMD did have to bring some efficiency cores to the table and they actually, well, they actually made their point and they actually found their holy grail, let's say that, because they didn't need another architecture, they can just use the same architecture, reduce the cache, reduce the frequencies and use two cores in the same uh, in the same spot they used one core before so they can actually double the core density um, while bringing much much better multi-threading multi-threading performance because once again those smaller cores can use simultaneous multi-threading as well or like Intel calls it hyper-threading um, so it's a win-win situation they don't need to design a new architecture they don't they don't need to have lots of trouble with schedulers because once again um, those cores have the same architecture, it's a win-win situation and the multi-threading performance will be much, much better at a cost of a very, very few watts. So it's, once again, it's a win-win situation. I did think that AMD found their holy grail once again in terms of, uh, in terms of CPU performance, at least in terms of multi-threading. Very, very interesting indeed. Do you understand? So guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about, uh, well, about this, about the Zen, the Zen 4C or the Zen 5C efficiency cores, what they will bring in terms of APU performance, what will they bring in terms of multi-threading performance, if they're worth it or not, in my opinion, of course they are, mostly for, for multi-threading performance, of course, eager to test them at least. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video, guys.